Uh, the idea is talking more about concepts than rather through projects. So we, one of the main concepts that now moves everything in architecture is sustainability. And the way we understand sustainability it's that it's not only environmental sustainability, it's not only the economical, it's not only the social, it's all of them together. So, but it is not that not everything, not all the decisions that you, we take that are environmental are viable in the, from the economic point of view. And not all the economic decisions are equitable in the social point of view. And not all the social decisions are beatable environmentally. So only when something is beatable, viable and equitable, then we are really talking about something that is sustainable. So this is like the, the key point. So we don't have to focus in each one of them. So that's why we're going to talk about strategies and the strategies are going to be in the middle of two of them. So when we want to be environmental and social at the same time, we take a strategy of increasing the intermediate spaces, like patios, atrios, spaces that will improve the environmental way, the, the behavior of the building, but at the same time, they have to become some social places for the community. And then, when we want to be environmental and economic at the same time, the strategy we will talk about is the idea of reducing. So if we reduce the amount of layers, if we reduce the amount of energy, uh, every time we reduce, it's more sustainable, it's more environmental, but at the same time it's more economic. And finally, the final strategy is the idea of sharing that allow us to be economic and social at the same time. So we only need to do one unit, and the rest of the units can take advantage of it, so it's more economic, but it's more social because then we generate a place, a social place for the community. So actually the lecture is only talking about these three strategies through the projects. So actually some of the projects will be dismantled through the uh, concepts, through the strategies, okay? So this is some of the images of this uh, increasing the intermediate spaces that we were talking about. This is something we were talking before, this idea of the non hierarchy house. The, the, how do you say it in French? Yes, non -house. Okay. Uh, and, and sometimes this idea of the new materiality, the new way, so we're talking of a new way of living that has to be Company uh, has to be done in a new way of building. So that's the, like we thinking of in, in this point of view. So the first strategy, the idea of the intermediate spaces. We talk about this building you just finished in Ibiza, in the Balearic Islands, and uh, the main goal here was being able to do a building without aptic systems. So. Then we have to think about the idea of comfort. How can we get comfort? It's not only about temperature. There are other parameters. We can talk about the humidity, the relative humidity. We can talk about the movement of the air. We can talk about the radiation or the metabolism of the user. And so these are the parameters that can make us be in comfort or not. So if one of them is high, maybe touching the others, we can generate this idea of comfort. And then, I would like, I'd like to show this, the, this drawing. This is the psychometric abacus of Carrier. Carrier was the inventor of the air conditioner, and he told us that every time we are outside this green area, we have to put on his machine. But we don't want to do that, but we have to understand how this is working. So, each one of these parameters, we try to think of which are the architectural elements that allow us to, to, to move them. So thinking about temperature, we can talk about the winter gardens, the atriums, the air movements. We can think of the cross ventilation, the solar chimneys. To talk about the humidity, we have to think of the hygroscopicity of the materials that have the, the, the ability of re regulate humidity of the air. 
And about radiation, we have to think of the density and the conductivity of materials that give us some inertia. And finally, for the metabolism, we have to think of the, the way the cloth in the user are wearing. So it, it, for us, the, the user is as important as the building that we do. So this is a really side plan. So this is the climatic car of the Balearic Island. So we have a very hot summers. Uh, but here, you know, here we, we, this is like one a mistake we have because this is or regulations or Código Técnico that is not properly because it thinks that we have low relative humidities in summers, but when we take the data from the airport or other databases, we realize that we are over the 80% of humidity in summers. And it's important to understand that the ideal humidity in space should be between the 60 and the 60, uh, the 50 and the 60 percent. So if it's too dry, uh, we we dry our defenses, and if it's too high, you know the bacteria get increased. So uh, we have to keep our spaces in the humidities. That's why the first decision we took was in this building was building with earth. And but talking about the strategy, this idea of the non jerarchic room, in this case, uh, this is an image we did in the competition, that you don't see the limits because actually we were not designing an object, we were designing a system. So in this case, it was a system of aggregation, you know, where the unit of aggregation was the room instead of the drawing. So in this case, we were talking about a room of three by four, 12 square meters, all equal. So again, this idea of the non jerarchy uh, so it's the same for the living, the dining, with the kitchen, every tenant room, and also the common areas. You know, the common areas measure, measure the same. And in this case, to answer to the regulations, we have to make some step backs every time we go upper. So these are the distances that are the ideal for the or regulations. So every time the, the upper floor has to be four meters a step back, that's why we have this proportion of the rooms. Uh, and every time that we generate a vertex, that generates a vortex, a movement of the air, that's something that we are wishing to have. And at the same time, you can see that there are some coverings on the patios, and then we understand what are they about. <laughs> so using this idea, this system of equal rooms, in this case, we are having three cores. Uh, so every time we have the, the, the stair, the lift, this is the room where we enter to the, to, to the, the common area, the common room that where we enter, and the patio. So we repeat this three times, and every time we are able to enter up to four drawings per plan, three when we get up, and finally only two of them. So that's why we are shaping the building differently in the different levels. But every, all of them, they have this cross ventilation, and all of them, they are facing south orientation. So if we look closer here, now we can see the structural bearing walls of Earth. And you know this idea that every time we relate with the exterior, we use intermediate spaces that facing to south. They are winter gardens facing to north. They are thermal buffers. And you know uh, it is important that this is like the, an image from, this is the room where we enter to the, the rest of the drawings. And you know, we have like this lattice that gives us some intimacy to the windows, but at the same time allows the air to pass through. And if we look up closer to one of the units, then we can see that the, the bathroom with the laundry, it's like a furniture. So we understand that it's a furniture that we place into one of the rooms, and also each one of the rooms has two doors. So, in fact, that we can connect the, the rooms to have <coughs> these double circulations through, through the space. So this is how this one of the rooms <coughs> connected to the others and getting these relations. At the same time, you know, this is the, the living room, and this relation, these openings, big openings between the spaces that have these relations in diagonal that allow us to have a, a, a house without corridors. 
uh, here we see the relation with the winter garden. But uh, in order to accomplish this idea that we were talking about having a building without uh, active system, we need the atrium, we need the winter gardens. Here we can see the atrium here, you know, these glass curtains in the winter gardens. This is the, what I was saying that it is not only important to be environmental. So the, the size of the, the covering of the atrio is the double as the size of the patio in order to capture more energy, but at the same time to allow us to have this common space, this social space for the community. So uh, here we have like this social room in the rooftop, and here we, we see this is like the, this element. So how does it work? This is in winter. So in winter, we, we, everything is closed. So we, we capture the energy with the atrium and also with the winter gardens. Uh, as we have a lot of inertia, we keep this energy the rest of the hours. As we have a very good insulation, that we don't have losses on this energy. And you know, this is why, uh, so here we see the, and we, when we see the simulations of how does it work, uh, we, we understand that outside we have 15 degrees and we can raise the temperature up to 23. But here, we're not happy because we, it's not an homogeneous temperature. That's why we place a fan in the middle of the, of the patio and then we make sure all the energy. So now we are able to rise this six, seven degrees from 15 to 21. And here we can understand what's happening. So outside, the temperature outside, we go down at night to nine degrees, up to 15, down to seven degrees, up to 12. Down. So this is an oscillation day and night. And here we have the temperature inside the house, a constant line of 20, 21 degrees with no active system. It is a flat line because we, we have a lot of inertia, so that makes a flat line, but if we only had the inertia, <coughs> the line, the flat line, would be the mean of the temperatures. But as we are able to increase temperature with the atrium and the winter gardens, that's why we can raise this mean temperature up to 21 degrees. And summer, how does it work in summer? Uh, in summer, we change the atrium, we uh, transform the atrium in a solar chimney, so we put down the solar protection in the interior part, it's not so obvious, but that generates that we are heating the air here, and hot air goes up, and as we have some openings, that generates a movement of the air. And this movement of the air will allow us to have some benefits, even though if outside there's no air movement. And at the same time, so everything uh, is open, so you can dissipate the energy through all the spaces. At the same time, you have all this cross ventilation and the regulation of the humidity because of the using of the earth. So here we see this idea of allowing the air to move through the building. And going back to the diagram, here we're only talking about temperature. So we have the blue line is the outside temperature, so down at night, 23 degrees, up to 30 degrees. So there's this oscillation, and here, we, we, you know, it's not that straight, the line, because in, in fact, when we did the competition, we were thinking of having uh, timber slabs, but then we had to change them to concrete in order to increase the inertia but even though we don't have enough inertia, but here we have like a mean line in to between 26 and 27 degrees. So as we were talking at the beginning, okay, which are the rest of the parameters in order to have comfort because maybe 27 degrees is not the best solution. So let's think, let's talk about the rest of the parameters. So movement of the air, it's an important, so remember all the drawings will have this cross ventilation here when we are changing through the building. And this solar chimney that when we open it strategically, here we have, this is the solar protection inside, we are able to generate 2.1 meters per second. 
every half meter per second is one degree of filling temperature. That means that the thermometer has the same temperature, but you feel, in this case, four degrees less than the, the temperature that says the thermometer. So finally, what we have to, with the situation is that this is the, the analysis of the hottest day of the year with a net temperature of 29 degrees. Remember that the mean temperature is 27 with an air speed of 1.5. Remember that our solar chimney is able to give us two meters per second with an humidity of 56% because we are using the earth. And with the proper clothing level, we are able to move the green area and generate comfort with high temperatures. So that's the strategy that we do in order to not need systems into this building. And this is another project, but the strategy will be the same. This is in Barcelona. In this case, the volume, the, the volume was given for a the planning regulation. So we, when we did the competition, we were not sure if it was a tower, or it was the tower that becomes a block, or a block that becomes a tower. But as you know, south is coming from here. We understood that we better understand it as a tower so we can take advantage of this orientation. So here we can see the building. The materiality of the brick has a lot to do with this behavior of the inertia that we need into the atrium. And, and here is the first plan we did. We, we first of all solve the tower with the two stairs, with the special lift, and then with this spastic situation, uh, we, 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 we were able to have this cross ventilation because of the corner situation uh, just and we can move the, the different equal rooms that we have here. And then in order to solve the tower these three typologies are the same as the ones of the tower so here we place the three equal ones and then we only have to add this special typology that allow us to give shape to this interior space. So actually what we, for us, what is important is to shape this space in order that we can have this cross ventilation in all of the units and then generate another atrium, getting the air from the north and, you know, here in winter, capturing more energy and dissipating the energy in the summer. So here, more simulations. Here we see the more, the, the more, the more amount of uh, sun, the radiation we, that we have and how indeed this is like it's a used mix because in the ground floor we have uh, an, um, a facility a sport changing rooms because there are some sport uh, places here next to it so and also we have a parking that it work, they work independently from the building so then we have to try to solve the parking with the natural ventilation and the same with the, the, the changing rooms and then every time that we can, we try to generate a social space. So the entrance is a social space. All the atrium with these relations, when we see when, when one point to another is a social space, the same with the tower. So you know, the moment when we change from the tower to the block, then we have another opportunity to have a social space. And again, in the rooftop patio, then in order to, to go to the covering, we generate a patio that it's again another social space. So here we can see this, this entrance room with the texture, we, we play with the material, with the brick and the texture. Here this is the, the, the atrium, no? air entering from north, going through the atrium and going out to the south. And you know, having this materiality that allow us to have a bioclimatic bio space in this, uh, in, the, in this space that has no assistance, but, you know, and at the same time, you know, the inertia of the brick and the, this idea of using the brick as lattices to give some intimacy, these are things that for us are very important. So every time we can, we understand this is a social, a social place. We place the, like these places to sit, and then we have all this visual relation between the spaces then we get, get up here, we have like this dimension, this social dimension, 
with double heights that allow us to show us the way out to the roof in the fifth floor. So then here we have this social space in the fifth floor and then that signifies something into the in the facade so that's why we have this change in the structure just to, to show this importance of this these kinds of spaces and then at the same time the brick into the houses to give some intimacies and to com so uh, and comfort through the light in this in Spain and finally we have this roof top patio again this idea of the same materiality does allow us to put some of the machines of the facility in the changing rooms and some spaces and, and again a, another place for the community. Uh, we can see this, display, this place from here and then this typology that it was important for us because like the bathroom is always in the same place and we can trip the situation of the kitchen and then we can move the bedrooms in order to change the scale of the facade. So in the, we, with these changes we are able to you know, send stories with all the equal <coughs> windows we thought it was not domestic enough so by moving this it's more we think we, we take off some of the scale of the, build, of the building. And in the section this idea of considering the movement of the air for the parking and the changing rooms. So in the changing rooms, we look through the lattice. We have a lattice in all the ground floor, and at the same time, the parking is able to have this natural ventilation through these lattices. Again, another project, this is one that we are just finishing in Barcelona. Again, this strategy of this atrium, this social space that has to become a so, uh, uh, environmental a strategy that has to become a social space. In this case, we're talking about three different uh, programs. So we have housing for refugees in the ground floor, then rental houses, the next four floors, and senior houses in the last three floors. Uh, in this case, uh, I think we won the competition because we were the only ones that, because each one of them has to, have, has to be totally independent from the rest, so instead of making one building beside the other, we put one on top of the other, and they all of them, they share the air of the atrium. So as I was explain, explaining, this is the, the rental houses, the first four floor, they have their core here. Here we have the core of the senior houses, and all of them, they share <coughs> and stare at the at the end, and the rental houses, they enter directly from the ground floor. So this is like this social space under this covering of the atrium. So this is right last week under the construction. Here, for us, it was so important. We simulated the acoustics, and we were very worried about the reverberation of the air. So if we didn't do nothing, we have five seconds of reverberation, but then we found out that uh, using some plastering that it has some absorption, you can go down to 0.9 seconds. And for us, these social spaces, we have to take care that they don't have some conflicts between them because we have to share dreams and not share problems. Uh, so this is like, how is the atrium gonna look like this is under the construction and these are again the simulations you know this is the how we increase the temperature here with the outside temperature and very similar strategies as the one we already went through in this case we also renovate all the air through the atrium because it's a big space so all the interchange of the air of the houses they are going through here so that we that means a reduction of the of a 74% in the demand of the winter. And in the summer, we allow the air to enter through the garden and goes into these spaces. And you know, this is the garden where the air is entering to the building. The next strategy, we'll talk about this idea of reducing. This is Cornelia, this is the uh, project that everybody knows. 
uh, talking about this idea of the grid uh, and the timber construction. So to, to, to explain this, this idea, this was a competition where we couldn't decide uh, the answer to the, to the planes. You know, many of the competitions, they give us the plan regulation, so we had to fit our building in a plot of 50 by 40 with a patio of 15 by 25. We nearly didn't do the competition, but then we thought, okay, let's try a conceptual approach. Okay, uh, let's think of using uh, the, this idea of the equal room so that when things are equal, there is no hierarchy. So we think maybe in the 21st century, we need to live without a hierarchy. We need, this is maybe a best answer to the new kinds of families, because like there is not necessary to have a bigger room for the parents and, the, and for the sons. So maybe the new the new kinds of family they, they fit better here, and at the same time when things are equal, they are very easily interchangeable. So we, we also gain some flexibility. That is not about moving the uh, moving the walls. It's only moving the furniture from one space to the other. So this is why we tried with the grid. But the big question was, okay, which has to be the size of a room in order to this to happen? You know, because in Spain you can do a single room for six square meters, double room with eight square meters, and the main room it's 10 square meters. But these 10 square meters, we think they're not enough to fit a living room or a dining room with a kitchen. That's why, you know, mm, you know we, we took the reference of the eight tatami room from the Japanese culture. Actually, Marta, my partner, she made a PhD about the Japanese house through the, through the cinema of Yasuhiro Ozu. And the nice thing is that in Japan, they don't call the spaces because of the use they have, because they change the use in every moment. So they call them through the, uh, the measurements. So each tatami is the measurement of a person lying in the floor, mm, a 90 by 1 meter 80, more or less. And in this case, this is measuring 360 by 360, nearly 13 square meters. After we found out that one of the versions of the kitchen of Frankfurt of Gretel Lisowski was measuring 350 by 360, and La Petite Cabanon of Le Corbusier was measuring 366 by 366. So we have the more flexible room, the more technical room, and the room of thinking of Le Corbusier, all of them fitting in our matrix. So here, uh, in the, at this moment, we only knew, okay, maybe here in the central part, we don't have the direct light, we will have the kitchens and the bathrooms, and only here we begin to discover how many units we can place here. So we have four cores, it's one of them in the corners, and then here you're entering up to five units per plan, and here to four units per plan, 18 units per plan in the building. And here we had this intuition that maybe this 360 measurement was a good measurement for a timber structure. So uh, we had this scheme that it was very conceptual, but then we realized it was not the most optimal one because of this idea of reducing we were talking at the beginning. Well, uh, the first decision in this idea, this is more like this idea of sharing, but uh, instead of entering directly to each one of the cores from the street, directly from the street, we decided to make a port and make all of them entering through the courtyard. So this is like the first shared space, the first intermediate space that through it we can enter to each one of the, of the cores. And you know, this is like the common gate, and it is important for us to be close because we have, we think that we have the, to leave this degree uh, of the intermediate spaces, but it's not, it doesn't have to look like a fence, it has to look like a filter, so that's why we are working with these very fine uh, stri uh, stripes of uh, wires of, of uh, uh, steel. And here, the, the, to, to gain this transparency and the importance of having some vegetation into this space. And then we are entering through the port, going to here, getting up 
with the stair and the lift we have into this room and we only have this small corridor. It's not a corridor that we're going through, we are entering to some of the units directly from the terrace. So this is the plan, you know, for us it's important this in this in differentiation not only between the units, at the same time with the common spaces, so that it is very difficult to understand which are the limits of the units and the common spaces. But we, we have, we here the only thing, the, we can also understand that we relate with the exterior always through an intermediate space. So we have a terrace to face to the, to the, to the street, and we have this that we call the Ngawa facing to the patio. Okay, but this is the only one, the only corners that are common, but you are entering directly to many of the units through the terrace. I'm sorry. So we go deeper, we can see this is the room for the stair, this is the room where we enter to the units where the lift let you, this is the common area, and here we are entering directly to some of the units. So, six modules per unit, three bedrooms, and you know, this idea of big openings between them, and having these enfilades, and these ways of walking around two terraces that we can move through the, the house in different ways. No? Here's how we solve the corner. In this case, with two smaller units, with four models and a half, and again here, here, so five units, five drawings per plan in this case. So here we see the room as a, the stair as a room. Here this is the common area. This is an entrance door. From the entrance door to the stair, this is the, again closer to this view and you know, having this view of the patio. This idea of big openings, you know, that allow us to, even though we're talking about small spaces of 30 square meters, that we are able to see more than one space at the same point of view. So we have like this enfilade of rooms, you know, placing the kitchen in the center. This is something that for us is very important because this is the, the key point to have the, the to not have corridors into, into the plan, and at the same time, it, it's good for the role gender, so we are able to see the domestic work in the center of the house, and so we, we, we think that the kitchen will be in the center again, the, than when it was like the heating place in the, in the house. <coughs> this is important for us, you know, here this is a room that we can open, open or close it, so we can uh, add it or not to the common areas and that we not, don't see all the space in one point of view. The importance of building all the corners that allow us to place the furniture and this idea that even though we are in one space of 10 square meters we are able to see four of them in one point of view. Some common areas uh, because of when we go up we have like this common terrace for the community, and talking about this idea of building with the timber. So we have this CLT structure, and one of the difficulties is how to solve the fire resistance. So there's two strategies. One of it, it's okay, uh, we can uh, allow the burn, the, the, the wood to be burned, so it's extra centimeter we give to the, to the timber, we gain 30 minutes. In this case, we need 90 minutes. So when we let the uh, slabs expose it, we have three extra centimeters. Another strategy is covering with plaster boards. Again, it's 50 millimeters plaster board. It's a 30 minutes. So to solve the facade, we place two plaster boards and one extra centimeter in the CLT. But this <laughs> is the reason why the first idea of having all the timber crosses in the middle of the plant was not a good idea because we had to increase three extra centimeters in all of the faces. So it's much more expensive, but at the same time, it, we are losing some many surfaces. So this would have made it possible. That that's why we understood we had to change and put in the middle 
pillars and beams that because of its massivity they are able to solve the fire resistance without increasing its measurements. And to make the optimization, because this is, this is a social housing project, so we didn't have more budget and nobody was expecting this building to be good. So we had to work with a, a structural engineer from the beginning. So this is a simulation of a room, of 360 room, which is the deformation if we place the slab between two supports. Okay, if we make a continuous slab, and then we compensate moments, then we can go from 6 millimeters down to 3 millimeters. And if we add the cantilevers, we can go down to 1 millimeter. That means that in the first option, we, are, we needed more than 15 millimeters, uh, 15, 15 centimeters. And then the last one, we only needed 12, so we build it with 15 in, in order to have the three extra we needed for the fire. So here we see these continuous slabs of the timber CLT. And in order to do the beams on the pillar, we thought, well, let's do the same, but we cannot order a beam of the length of the building, so we need to make joints. And making joints between timber, it's very easy if they are an articulation, and it's very hard if we want to work in a, in a, in a, in a static way. So, Instead of making the joints where we have the supports, that we have a very high moment, we decided to make the joints here where the moment is zero. This is one fifth between the, system of, uh, between the distance of the supports, so that's why we designed this metal plate piece that allowed the beam to pass in two pieces in each one of the sizes, so it's 20 by 35, two of them, and then another plate that allows the compression of the pillar doesn't affect the beam, and then making the joint here in an easy way as an articulation. So for us, this is the key point of the building. You know, even the, the pillar is going the same way where all of the tubes. And here we can understand the building moment diagram only by understanding how we built the construction. So this is the final plan of the timber. And in the competitions, we needed 0.5 cubic meters by square meters. And in the final version, we only needed 0.24 cubic meters by square meters with the same slab, the same facade, only changing the interior. So even though building with timber is sustainable, building with half of the timber, it's more sustainable. So that's this idea of reducing. So we are able to reduce the amount of material, so it's more cheaper, so we can pay it with this budget of social housing, but at the same time, it's more sustainable because we need less amount of material. And going back to this, this is the first time, this is a competition we won in 2010 and was built in 2014. And it was the first time where we tested this idea of the non hierarchic rooms. So we, it was like a test of, I don't know why this is here. Oof, sorry. No, it's not here. Sorry. Uh, next slide. <laughs> so I don't know why, uh, something missing. Well, uh, this is an, going back to Ibiza with this decision of the building with the earth. Here we are thinking of which are the materials with more inertia. So here we have density and conductivity. You know, the worst with inertia is so, so we compare earth, wood timber, bricks, and concrete. So the worst is the, brick, the, the timber, then the brick, then we have the earth with 2,000 kilos by cubic meter of density, and then the concrete that is the champion of the density and the conductivity with 2,300 kilos by, by cubic meter and a very good conductivity. But if we understand the same materials through the hygroscopy, uh, the worst of it is the concrete, then we have the brick, the, all of, both of them, they are not very good with the moisture regulation, 
And then we have the timber that is quite good, but the earth is more than double with this idea of regulating the humidity of the space. So that's why we choose the, t the, the earth. And, you know, the way we use the earth is with, with the uh, concrete earth block, uh, com compressed earth block, CEB. Uh, but the, the enterprise, they used to do it in a very big pieces, so you needed auxiliary elements to place it in the place, and they only were using it for singular houses. Uh, we needed to uh, collective houses, so we said, well, this is not going to work. We need a smaller piece that you can handle with one hand, that it has a weight of less than four kilos. So that's why we asked them to do this small piece, that then we can put all these people in the place in order to <coughs> construct all these labyrinths of walls made of earth. So this is the building under the construction. Then in the inside, it looks like a cave. Then, then here, you know, in Spain, we are not very well, we're, we're not very good in construction. And every time we do a wall of bricks, uh, we need to plaster them in order to ensure us that we don't have acoustic breaches. Uh, but here we don't want to plaster because we want the performances of the earth. So the what we did is we, we plaster a very fine uh, clay plaster and then we polish it in order to ensure that all the joints are perfectly closed uh, so we don't have these acoustic breaches. So that's why when you see the walls, they are a bit shiny. That's because all of them has been polished. And the same strategy we did with the floor of the concrete. So, and you know, that means that all the electric elements are in, su in surface. These are the connections between some of the rooms. And talking about the construction, you know, uh, when we work with these uh, bedding walls, uh, uh, structural bedding walls, uh, it is important for us that we are able to solve the acoustics uh, with the law of mass in order that we can solve it only with one layer and one material. Because otherwise we need to double the structural elements and we need to double the material. So in order for this to happen, we need at least 300 kilos by square meter of wall. So we have a density of 2,000 kilos by cube meter, and with this 20 centimeters of this piece, we have 400 kilos by, by square meter of wall. So we, we are able to solve, it has enough density to solve the acoustic only with the law of mass. And then, that's why all the bedding walls, they measure 20, and the rest, they only measure 10 centimeters. And in order to solve the, the slab, uh, remember we, we did the competition with the timber slab. We thought it, it, it was going to be more sustainable, but then in order to solve all the, the demands, they told us we have to increase the inertia, so then we had to do it with concrete. So we were thinking, okay, let's think a way of making concrete more sustainable, so we try to look back to the vernacular architecture, try to go back to giving geometry to the, to the slab. So we place these prefabricated beams of 20 by 10 every 80 centimeters, and we join all of them together with a very thin layer of 5 centimeters of concrete. Uh, so now we have a 25 centimeter structural section and the amount of concrete equivalent of a 10 centimeter concrete slab. So that means that we have a reduction of a 66% in the amount of concrete that we are using. So it's at the same time more uh, a 66% more uh, sustainable. So that again, this idea of reducing. And then here now we cannot use the law of mass because this is a very light slab. So we have to go with this strategy of uh, mass, spring, mass. So we have the first mass, the first mass, then the spring, it's a rock ghoul of 30 millimeters, and then a 60 millimeter concrete floating 
layer that instead of adding a, a pavement over it, we just polish it and again reducing the amount of layers. So this is how we built the slab. It is nice because as we wanted to have this inertia to dissipate, so we, am, we increase the, um, the surface of, uh, of interchange in a 50%. So we, we have, uh, it's more, it's working like a radiator the other way around. Uh, so we insulated all the building with cork, with a 10 centimeter isolation of cork. So here we see all, all the building uh, with cork. And then we plaster it with lime to have, you know, this is like this Ibiza typical color um, with the reflection of the light with a plaster of, of lime. And then sometimes we, we have to, to make some, some covering. So instead of covering with pl plaster boards, we did it with clay boards. Uh, and then we plaster them with uh, clay with some straw. And finally, for doing the isolations in the coverings, instead of using the slopes, we did the slopes with the timber, with the timber frame, and then we put Posidonia that we take from the uh, beaches in Ibiza, we dry it in, in the plot, next to the plot, and then we use it as a isolation, a natural isolation, we cover it with, a, with an OSB, and then we put the EPDM, and then some gravel, recycled gravel in top, just to make the finish. Again, uh, all the exterior spaces, we don't use concrete, we use gravel, we use these gabions, so we try to reduce the amount of impact of all the materials, and then we have a reduction of a 60% in the amount of CO2 of the building. And going back to the, the project of the different the, the senior houses and the rental houses. So here, he, we see that this is the facade of the, rental, of the senior with more terraces, this is the rental. And here, again, we, we try to use a similar system as the one we did in Ibiza, but more adapted to the situation of Barcelona. So we give try to, in this case, we couldn't do the building with timber because it was too big and we have to make some sectorization in each one of, of the plants. And then we decided that the most, the most uh, optimal way was to do it with concrete. And in this case, we prefabricated these P elements with this is the, and you know, all our prefabricated elements that they are poured together with a very thin line of concrete that joins everything. So in this case, we don't make the prefabrication in order to go faster, we just do it in order to go thinner. So here we have a 30 centimeter structural section with the equivalent amount of concrete of 15 centimeters. So it's the half of a standard building. So this is how we build it. And when we see the space under the construction and even the elements of the facade, all these pillars are prefabricated. And it's nice that when you finish the structure, you already have the facade finished. And this is a project. Uh, this, I won't explain too much of this project, but it's an, this is a nice idea. It's in Barcelona, uh, and it's very close to the river. And in, in this case, we understood the river as um, uh, because of the movement of the air. So during the day, the air goes up to the mountains, and during the night, it comes from the mountain to the sea. But you know, it's using this canal that is the river. So we, we understand, kind of, we understood that the, the building was in, in the middle of this movement, and it has some suction of the, of the air. So we decided to design all the facades as a big lattice that take advantage of this situation of being in front of the river. So when we were thinking of the plan, we just decided to put the, the stair in the facade, not in the more conventional way. So it takes more facade than as, as usual, but that allows us to put the second bathroom behind and then having the, the main bathroom here that the wing is able to move around. And here we can like have a very big 
a deep hall, so we, here we have the living, the dining room, and the kitchen, and understanding how the air will move through all the building, and that allows us, at the same time, to have all these exterior spaces in the facade to have this lattice closing. And the important thing that I was going to speak about this is the parking in this building. Uh, it also take advantage of this idea of the movement of the air. So we try to, uh, as the one of the tower, try to get the situation of the movement of the air. So this is like, so we, it's not only air, it's also light, what we get through these lattices. And the, the interesting thing is that, you know, the promoter thinks that we thought of doing this is the parking that they are asking us to, just in order to accomplish all the, the regulations. But in, in really, we, we, we think it doesn't make sense to build parking today because in 10, 20 years, the, there's new ways of doing more of the mobility. And uh, whenever uh, the automatic car that with no driver gets into the action, then it will never park under our buildings. It will be walking around the city and we call it with an app. And then we are building some spaces that will last 100 years, but now they are only, we will only use it for 10, 20 years. So that's why every time we think of parking, we think of which is the way it will become in the future. So in this case, we understood that instead of going with the ramp with the car, we can go with the bike, we can park our bikes here, and then we have our studios with natural light at the end, and here we can have some storages for the houses. And in this project here, we'll only explain the parking. It's this element, this patio that you see here. Here, there was a very special situation, so we have two floors of parking in order to accomplish the amount of uh, parks that they asked for. So uh, they, they didn't allow us to do it with the natural ventilation, and that's why we had to do some simulations and show them which is how with all the proper openings we were doing, how the air and which is the uh, antiquity of the air that we will have in the parking. So we, we can think of parkings that they can have trees inside, you know, with this ramp, and this is under the construction now. And finally, this idea of sharing, when we want to be economic and social at the same time, this is an advertisement we have in Barcelona Metro that it says, I never thought that the worst of getting age was the loneliness. So actually, this is one of the major problems that we have. And mainly in Spain, we have this inverted population pyramid. So, uh, but it's not only affecting the age people. Also here we see the taco rooms the loneliness of the Japanese uh, teenagers. So that's why this idea of the intergenerational house for us takes some, it's an opportunity maybe to solve something else rather. So we can go against this loneliness. So going back to the, pro the project of the senior and the rental houses, uh, this is the, how we solve the senior houses. So only with one bedroom, so kitchen, living room, and uh, this white uh, terrace. For us, it's very important this. You know, this, this is 360 empty by five. So this is like a room, a studio room that they can share the spaces. So everybody is walking through here. This is the solution for the rental houses. So we add the second bedroom in the, in the courtyard, and they only have a bigger, uh, a more deep terrace, but it's not a continuous one. So this is the relation between the entry and the, the you know, this is the part, the, the atrium and the house. This is the same houses. And this is how the both of them. 
So if normally we will have this is the rental plan, with this is the core of the rental plan, this is the core of the senior that goes up and doesn't affect. When we go to the next one, we then we are using this core. In the where we had the other core, here we have some opportunity places for the common sociability of the senior houses. And then we convince them to do a special plan where they will have these inter intergenerational houses with people for age and young people that can share the kitchen to each two of them. So each one of them has their own private space, but you enter through the sharing space in this building. And this is a project that we are now, it's not in the construction, but we won the competition and we are developing it now. Uh, it is a cooperative so for senior house, senior people. And you know they, are, they want to be one cooperative and they give them two buildings. But we can join them through the basement. So that's why there's different ways to enter. So we can enter directly to each one of the blocks. And we, whenever we want to share, we can enter to the sharing space through the basement. And here we're using the same materiality, everything we learned in Ibiza. In this case, we try to go further using the art from part of the expression of the earth. And it's also give us some relation to the environment in the, in the town, in the Sarria. It's a part of Barcelona that has this typical arches. So uh, this is the, a standard plan where we have four units of one room, 45 square meters. This is the standard solution. And this is when the one that we propose that instead of why instead of having all individual spaces, we have 30 individual uh, space, so 30, 30 square meters, and sharing 50. So, in fact, they have, they can live in 80 square meters. So, instead of thinking of how to do cheaper houses by doing them smaller, maybe we can only do a bit smaller the private space, but then we can have a bigger house in, in global. So, and the nice thing at the same time is that here we can only have four units, and with this strategy we can have five units. So, in this, by this strategy of sharing, we can put more people in the house. Because now, sometimes we think that the unit of measurement of the sustainability, that it's because of the square meter, is not the right one, because we should think of the unit as for person. So, how many kilos of CO2 we are giving, we have per person in the building. So, and that allows us to do interesting things. So, understanding that the terraces are a shared space and placing the stair into south, that is something that you normally wouldn't do, but this is because we will have some energetic strategy. So, here we work with the earth and the uh, and the concrete mm, uh, with the beams. Uh, this is the private space that has also the capacity to join with the neighbors, so sometimes they, they can join together. This is the shared spaces the, in between the five units per plan, and also, you know, you have this shared terrace for all of them, and you know, this is like working as a winter garden, so we take the energy from this space and we bring it to the private units. And in summer, we change the strategy. So we, we have a solar chimney facing to the north, and at the same time, this is a highway with lots of noise. And it is important that you are able to have the cross ventilation without opening the windows uh, that face to the, to the highway. And finally, we have like this social dimension that for us it's very important, you know, because we are in the basement and we have to go up to get the light. And this is the, the last project I will explain. This is a building in Mallorca we just finished. It's in San Cervera. Uh, it's in the north part of the island, close to the sea. And it's a very small village with very narrow streets. And 
it is nice that we are very close to the city center, but at the same time we are in the limits. And here we have, this, is, this used to be the railway, now it's a bike path. And all the village is built with this sandstone they call mares, and they use it <coughs> structural. And you know, you have like this vegetation behind these fences. So the first strategy was to divide, you know, the volume had to place 44, 42 units, so divide into two, two, so that generates two voids, so that are connected with this street, with, three, with two cores, so it is again important, the void between the pieces and understanding this space that has to have a dimension similar to the ones of the streets of the old town. And here we have a mineral patio and a vegetable patio. So this is like, we, we use the same sandstone to build the building. We were worried of having the corridor, so that's, we thought the lattice was more important to keep the, the character of the old town. So here we have the, the entrance, looking at to the patio. So the patio is a bit lower because, you know, we have the building with a slope, so one of the building is one floor over the other. So here we have, here there used to be a well, and here we have a place for infiltration of all the rain of the, the building. So, and the void, no? The, for us it's important this void and these lattices that allow us to give this unity and this vertical proportion to these corridors. This is the well that we restored it and filled it with the gravel and building with this massive stone, no? with these elements. So this is the mineral patio. So here we, we see this, this is the, the ramp for the parking and some communal spaces and these streets that we have here. So we, we have another entrance through here that it's for bikes and here we have the entrance of the cars for the parking and then we have this relation, this level of the middle patio and the vegetable patio. Here we have some storages, this is the parking of the bikes and here some common rooms for the community. So this is the entrance for the bikes and this is the entrance for the cars. You enter through here, this is the middle patio this the entrance, the ramp of the cars. This is the communal areas for the community, some uh, shared spaces for the community. This is like the, the, the street that gets some light through these patios with some vegetation, the corridors with the lattices. And this is important for us, you know, that every time you have many loops of movement so you can go from one side every time, not going backwards, also through the parking, so this just explains this kind of thing, so this is one of these loops, these are the common areas. I'm talking about the, 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 the house, you know, in here, this is the two bedroom situation, we place the bedrooms into the corners, having like this day zone that it has the two orientations, and it is important that every time the house relates with the exterior is through an intermediate space. Here, this is a winter garden, and here, this is a lattice. So the room is looking by the side, you know, because of privacy or thermal, thermal conditions. And it is important for us, again, this is built with, uh, with walls, structural walls, uh, and, and here we, we can see this idea of the lattice no? the, to relate with the corridor and the winter garden. So framing this relation between the, the exterior. And you know, this space, it can become an external and exterior room, so we can open the entry and you know, when it, before it was this is interior and this is exterior, it becomes a room whenever you want to share with the corridor and the community. So there are these situations of openness with the house. 
here we have more closer to the this is the room that looks through the lattice and this is the material that we plastered with lime that has the ability to give us the moisture regulation <coughs> again this is the idea of, the, of giving geometry to the slabs in this case is the a winter garden that is you know two bedrooms and the living room exposed uh, electrical elements and this is the the, the streets that they, they are they are as white as the ones of the of the village you know white streets so here you, you, we think it is important to be wider than standard so not new <coughs> in the case of things can happen and this point that you can open to these spaces And you know, this is in when they are living. Now they they take care. You know, even though this is not private because it's part of the common areas, they understand through the changing of the pavement that these belong to them. So they bring their homes a bit outside, and everyone do it in a different way. And you know, the same in the interior part. This is something that we we, we are very. We like them because we, we don't finish the kitchen at all, so they, they finish it and sometimes they put another bar and then they, they are more happy with the house because they finish them. They, we call it the, the IKEA effect that even the, the shelters are not straight, they are proud of it. So uh, we, we like when these kinds of things happen, so we like to go back to the buildings. This is how we built all the facade with no a, a metal element, so only cutting the stones, so it's self-standing with, the, with their own thickness, and this is like how they use the winter garden sometimes here with the sewing machine. And just to finish, we like to finish with this sentence, always never different, but never always the same by Eduardo Chiera. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It was really uh, fascinating the way you always go to the centimeters and go to the users and go to the structure and go to the light and go. So it was really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have questions. Yeah. Um, I would speak to the mic. I had a question maybe about the, your working process. Yeah. As you said, you have the three essential uh, elements that are economic, um, social, and environmental. And I would like to know when you respond to the in-between of those, um, are you working them separately? And when you work and research about it, you, I don't know, find that one <coughs> isn't working, so you, you, sh you choose another one? And related to this question, how do you work with engineers? Do you have one in your in your office, or are you a close relationship with one that you work, or something like that? Okay. Uh, the first thing is that if it for me being an architect is a matter of taking decisions. So we we take in consideration many options, and the one that is able to answer the more questions that's the one that we keep. So we 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 like to. To, uh, to choose the things that solve more than one thing and they have multiple lectures so every time we, we like things that are not only one way so that's uh, kind of try to answer the first question and then about the we we have some collaborators they're always the same but they're external from our office but you know they give us the simulations that they begin at the, be at the very beginning of the competition you know we always work with the same structural engineering and we push him every time to go a bit further and you know so every time it's a matter of uh, having good questions for them you know we give them we, we try we push them to be a bit further every time and you know we are like a family but it's, they're not in our office <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I was really amazed by uh, by the methods, like by the structure that you use in the buildings. And I'm quite a fan of like earth-made materials, and like I quite enjoyed the fact that you covered the earth with the, the timber. I was wondering in terms of like structure. Uh, like a structural concerns, do you have any limits in terms of like levels uh, of the buildings when you are going with these kind of materials or? Well actually the levels of building with earth were much lower than the ones we did because you know when we asked them they say okay you can only do one three floors but we needed to do five but you know it is three standard floors but the distance between supports it's three meters and normally it's five so that's half and you know normally we, you have a heavy slab but we did a, um, a light slab so never you know you, you don't have to close your mind so every time we just find out the way of how to build with the height that we needed with the material we thought it was the best so every time it's a matter of the question it's not what can we do is how can we do it to do it? So you have to think, okay, by the standard, you won't be able to do it, but maybe only changing one thing, then it is possible. So you, or, 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 or we, we try to find what do we have to change in order to make it possible. But I mean, just like in case of number of the floors that you can build, like uh, does it like make any concerns to build this? Can you build like a high storage building? No, it has to be with the, okay, with the compression resistance of the material. So we have four newtons by millimeter. So that means that we adjusted to that. So we cannot go higher with the system with that we did and the, in the building, but you know, uh, actually, we choose that system because, you know, if you want to build with earth, you can choose the adobe that it was made with the Egyptians, or you can choose the, the warm earth that made with the Chinese, but the adobe has less resistance as the one that of the Chinese, and the one of the Chinese has much more res less resistance as the one that we are using, a Colombian strategy that it was we using the um, hand compression at the beginning and now we have a compression with a machine and then we can increase the resistance so sometimes what do you have to change is work with the industry and get more resistance depends so actually now we are working with them and we are giving we are ch trying things to do uh, to make it like more insulation or so depends so but every time only changing small things everything is possible that's our point of view uh, thanks for the presentation uh, just another question about the uh, earth construction um, the question is uh, what's the durability of uh, a wall made of uh, earth bricks uh, and also in terms of uh, dust and dirt that it takes uh, maybe in the inside I see that you have left the, the face of the wall uh, empty so also what's the result in this building if it's getting more dirty or not and also instead of durability is it like a brick or what's the life uh, of this type of construction? For uh, as long as, as far as we know, it's the same as a standard construction. You know, uh, when you build it, it gets some dust. So then we apply some. Uh, I don't know it means how to say this. Uh, it's uh, <coughs> silicate, potassium silicate, could, could be, <laughs> and that lets that that the, yeah, that is not. Uh, it doesn't fall anymore. So it's like a paint in a way that so. Uh, and it's easy, very easy to clean, and even worse, you can polish it as we did it. So it has many, many possibilities. So we, we're happy with the material. Thank you. What's the thinnest uh, slab you can build in uh, Spain? With regulations? 
I don't know how to answer to this, but uh, it, it, it is not uh, the regulation that they, they don't talk about thickness. They give you, they ask you, you have to have the sun uh, isolation, so you have to have the, the structural resistance, and when you are able to solve it, all of the, the fire resistance between the slabs, in your case, we cannot go to layers thinner than five centimeters. That's but but as a layer because then we have the beams. So I mean, but, uh, I'm sorry. Maybe my question was more re uh, related with the uh, fire uh, regulations uh, because yeah. the system you proposed with the um, um, the thin slab with yeah. the uh, secondary uh, structure is a system we had a lot here in Lausanne uh, in the past, which was a system in BIC, but today regulations, but uh, they ask you have a thicker slab, which is a bit... Uh, has a lot to do with the, 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 resist, the, the distance that you have of concrete to the, to the steel, not the thickness of the concrete. So you have to put more distance behind because of the, but it's more the steel than the concrete that, that you have problems. So depend of, of the, depending, you know, you have a regulation that depending on the height of the building, we need a time of evacuation that it goes from 30 to 60 to 90 to 100, 120. But uh, if you have the requirement of two centimeters, you can very easily get the 60, but only adding maybe one centimeter with the recoverment of the metal, you can gain part of the, the resistance. So it's, you know, because the, what we have in Spain, they, they don't give us answers the, or regulations. They ask us to some performances, you know, so we have to be able to give the performances, but they don't tell us how. They don't, have, they don't tell us you have to do it that way. We can say, okay, we give answer to the performance by a different way, and this is like our, under our responsibility. Thank you. Um, I'll wonder if when you talked about concrete and the fact that there was also the use to consider uh, in your building, is there like, uh, educational aspects and that like the users really understand all these passive principles that you put? I don't know. So can you can you go ah, with the micro? Sorry. Sorry. I was wondering when you talked about the comfort aspects yeah. and then you talked about the users. Yeah. Uh, if there was an educational aspect uh, of course. Yeah. You know. So how uh, about you? Uh, sustainable user is get much less amount of uh, demand <coughs> of energy than a sustainable building. You know, the user is more than the 50% of the sustainability. So every time we have to explain the user how to do it better, and you know, it's a key point. You know, user is, for us, is a key point. Just in continuity of this question, I was wondering who is uh, opening or closing the collective windows? Yeah, that's a nice question. Depends in depends of the project. In Ibiza, uh, as we don't have nobody is in charge of the building, then we we did it only we did it with a calendar, and there's one day of the year that we have the building build the, the summer building and one day of the year changed to the winter building. So it's a thing that it's only happening once. So then like we did the simulation, okay, which is the day that we can consider that the, we can improve. So then it's like we're building two buildings, but the one of the senior houses with the rental houses, this is more dynamic because uh, the senior houses, they have a concert and then this person is taking care of it. So if it has some problems, can go and fix it. So it depends of the situation of the building. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. We, we also have, you know, if there is raining or so they have some sensors and they 
And they, 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 they go, they are automatic. You, they only go pushing a button, you know. You don't have to open them. So it's, they, they are motorized. Everything is motorized. Okay. Um, it's a question regarding the typology of your um, uh, housing units. Uh, so in your project, uh, you showed two types, either the square the, that are all identical uh, rooms or uh, the um, apartments that looked like they had like a core, in, case, in your case it was like the um, uh, bathroom. And then you can move around, uh, you can move freely around the core. So how do you choose in the beginning of your project if you're going to go for one or the other? Oh. <laughs> I cannot explain this. <laughs> I know because it depends, you know, every time. Uh, sometimes we try to combine them, you know, in Ibiza we are able to combine them, even. Uh, depends. You know, the, we did uh, sell your housing where that we didn't explain it here, but it was one of our um, projects that, you know, we were thinking of why how people senior how people they need to work a lot so we thought that the central core was a very good solution because then when they can go around they never finish their work and every time they turn around they see a different house so sometimes these are the the, the starting points you know mainly with the user uh, i think that you know uh, it was a pity I couldn't explain the, the first project we did with, uh, with uh, the equal rooms because at that moment we did it with the smaller rooms and then we didn't realize that it, then we realized the importance of the size and you know every time you know because equal rooms it's not uh, it's something that we we're not so used it, it comes from the Italian palaces but now we, we don't know much how to do it and so every time, and it's something that you never, it's not always possible to get it. But you know, sometimes you don't have enough facade, so you have to make it a bit deeper. But we think the square one works better than the other one, but it's not always possible. So uh, at the beginning, we only, we just begin only equaling, uh, some projects we only equal the rooms, but not the, the common spaces of the house, you know, the one of the tower, all the rooms are 10 square meters, but then we realize that conceptually making all of them together, it's a better answer to our world today. And it has a lot to do with the concept of intimacy, because in some moment, the, you know, uh, this, this history of, uh, of, of Robin Evans that explains that the evolution from the Italian uh, infiltration of the way you move through the rooms to the English uh, invention of the corridor because of intimacy. And then, like, in some moment the room became uh, something that was very private and now we think that in reality, uh, this is changing because of our mobile devices. Now we have more privacy between us and our mobile than the, the one we have in the room that, that allow us to open more the porosity of the house. And instead of moving through canalization, that means going through the corridors, you can go back to this idea of the irrigation by the way you move in the house. But it's, we don't know. Who are the architects? Who are the As we saw um, in your different projects, uh, your distributive cores are most of the time the, f the, the architecture that um, bring people together as a social meeting point and also is a response for the climate one and how and I was wondering if um, as is another project you define your distributive course for the climate and the social meeting 
and then your housing units, or is it something that you do to, all together? Because most of the time, uh, your distributives are very generous and give like a lot of social <coughs> grouping for the people and yeah, the everything, inhabitants. Everything goes together. Every time you go one step back, two, two forward, one back, and you know, because every time you put a new input, then you have to reconsider the ones before, because otherwise they won't fit. So just in order that everything fits, you have to be open every time and understand that the order that you take affects a lot to the decisions. And sometimes we like to begin, sometimes when we do the parkings, we begin parkings from one side and then we begin uh, housing from the other and then we find out how they match, but it depends. But for us, all of the entries are as important and they have to meet in a way that it, it works. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome.